Hi, this is Maginoni. Welcome to another edition of The Good, The Bad, and The Disappointing. This one, I'm going to do something a little bit different at the end. Anyways, let's look at the good. I'm laying down original sin number three at all costs. Now, the reason why it's this. If you look at it in terms of a story, you know, there's not a lot going on here. They're, they're just exploring things or gathering some clues. I'm cool with that for a number three issue. But what really, really did this for me is not only did you have good art that you can't tell who some of these people are out of costume, but there are two oh my god moments in here. One, new readers won't figure it out. They don't, they don't understand the implication of what, what one of the um, deaths or murders what that means. Uh, cosmic fans or older time fans will know exactly what's going on and how technically that shouldn't have happened but that's besides the point. The second is at the very end. Now there is, I, I will say this, there are two deaths. Okay, They do pretty much say these are the people that are involved with the um, the theft of the eyes, but there's something else that's going on in the background. And I think there's actually a couple things that are really going on in the background that they're just kind of being really secretive about. One of them is revealed at the end, and I'm being very careful not to reveal something. Overall, though, I really found that the, like I said, the art was good, but in, there's times where you look at people out of costume, like so you have no clue who they are, other than Nick Fury, and that's because, you know, he's got an eye patch. The other part is, I liked how they're going to these different side stories and exploiting this is what's going on here, that's what's going on there. I love the pairing between Doctor Strange and Punisher. They just don't get along. And they're very antagonistic without being very blatantly obvious. I mean, it is blatantly obvious when you read it, but it's written in such a way where it's not like some of these other... Com comics that do it where you have two people who oppose each other, they're a little bit more selective at the choice of words, and that's what I really appreciate about that. Now, I can give you this. Here's a clue here. These are some people that are involved in what's going on, because they're saying that they're going to be getting some visitors soon, and he's got himself one of the bullets. Uh, that are gamma radiated that's been that killed the watcher and what the other heroes are looking for now I can give you another clue about what's going on and I have a feeling this is going to come back later Nick Fury mentions at the beginning when the orb releases all the secrets everybody is going Stark you know I want to kill Stark you know Cap got his secret out there Thor's going by the uh, spirals of Asgard, I have a sister, you know, and, you know, you have, with the babysitter, you have dog, you have all of that, but then Nick Fury's going, how come I, I have lots of secrets, and how come I don't have any, how come something wasn't revealed to me, so I think that's very telling about the Nick Fury we see here, and part of me is thinking, that might not really even be Nick Fury. That might be one of those life um, decoys uh, that you know like, that Nick used to always use. So, so I have a feeling the real Nick Fury is still working in the background somewhere. Now, uh, I'm really curious to see well, how some of these um, secrets are going to play out. There's some that are like. They're pretty much like in your like game changing in the sense you have Thor going, um, you know, like I have a sister to, you know, you slept with the babysitter, you know, she loved me and never said anything, you know, I know who killed my mom, you know, some of these other ones are gonna be very minor, but they could have really big ripple effects like later on in the individual storylines. So I'm really curious to see how some of these are going to play out. And I'm glad that they didn't go for these super big reveals for everybody. Because like Thor, Spider-Man, the Hulk, 
you know, cap, those are all really big things. The, what also this really did do was, when the Orb revealed the secrets, it really, really damaged some of the heroes mentally, you know, because of what they learned. And it's kind of splintered a lot of the heroes even more, so there even there's less heroes to explore. But overall, like I said, this is one of those types of issues where it's not this greatest thing known to mankind, but the two moments in here that matter, those were home runs. So I like that. All right, the bad. The bad is got to be Avengers World. Now, here's the deal with Avengers World. Under normal circumstances, I would say, you know what, this is actually a fairly decent book, you know. It's got some Avengering going on. It's got this, you're fighting the Gorgon. You got this huge dragon thing. You got some issues going on in Matapur. But here's the problem. It's nothing that these guys, the, you know, the creative team can't fix. The problem is Avengers World is basically a comic that we can just throw it away. This does not have to exist because it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. You know, like, while they are still continuing to a certain degree the AIM storyline, and, you know, with the Gorgon and Hydra and people like that, so it technically it, it matters, but the problem is you have the new Avengers and the Avengers, you have the Illuminati, you have the, the worlds colliding. That storyline is so much bigger and so much more important. This doesn't matter. You know, it's kind of like... It, it, it's it's almost like this side story that it's kind of like you don't need because it, it has no impact. It doesn't feel like it has an impact. So, and I, I'm, there's a part of me that's almost tempted to cancel it because, like I said, it doesn't matter to me. But at the same time, I'm going, well, this does continue the AIM storyline. I am curious to see how that plays out. So, and the other problem is, it's not, there's parts of it that aren't really dealing with it, and it takes it forever to deal with the, with these subplots. So it's like they're even dragging their feet even more. So I'm like, oh, come on. Just get the, just move on. I'm tired of it already. I'm tired of these, these mega events in a way, and this is also pushing the DC to a certain degree, DC coming up shortly. And it's like, I don't, I, I just, I don't want all this extra baggage, just tell me good, compelling stories, and I'll be happy. But anyways, Avengers World. The Disappointing. New Warriors number five. Now, here's the deal with New Warriors number five. It's not that Yost is, is a horrible writer here. It's, it has nothing to do with that. The problem with the New Warriors is it's kind of like a book that it's... <coughs> I guess the best way for me to describe it is these are a bunch of characters you don't care about. You know, they haven't really did anything to make you want to care, to make you invested in these characters. You know, if, if for an example, if in New Warriors 6 they all died, I wouldn't care. Because none of these, I have no attachment to anybody. You know, like, granted I can say, well, I like Justice from the past and Speedball, even though I hate the fact that he got reconned back to Speedball from Penance. And Nova, I love Nova, but, you know, he's not even in the issue half the time. Now, there's some interesting new characters, you know, like Hummingbird. I like her. Um, you have that Atlantean. She's kind of interesting, but she's just a Submariner Nomura, you know, copy. You have the Scarlet Spider that's providing a little good um, antagonism, you know, within the groups, this way they don't quite work squeaky clean. But beyond that, it's kind of like, I just don't care. And I think by issue number five, I really should start caring. And unfortunately, it's not doing its job there. It's, you know, it's, this is another one of these titles where I'm really, really tempted to quit. Now, there's this vision that, that uh, what's her name here, the Atlantean, uh, who's not Nomura sees, and I'm telling you, I swear to God to you in my life, if I was a superhero, I was with these misfits, I get a vision of this, where we're hanging upside down, with pentagrams and blood, and chained up, I swear to God, I would leave immediately. And there wouldn't be a, hey guys, you know, it's nice teaming up here, 
it would just be poof, ninja, smoke, vanish, gone. No way. Anyways, that's my disappointment. Now, my other big disappointment that I have is, is this. It's called a recycling of stories. Now, or at least stories are panels. And I've noticed this in four issues so far to this week. We have it in Iron Fist, Captain America, Earth 2, oops, and there was one more. I, I thought there was four. But anyways, these three right here. Now, here's the deal. With Earth 2, what you have is, you know, you have the basic blah 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 story. They're all tr trying to save Flash and blah blah blah. Apocalypse fighting. And then you have the, the Superman who doesn't want to fight, but yet underneath this costume, how many times have we seen this picture before? You know, it's kind of like this. I understand that there are certain points where you want to see certain things. It seems to, to make the reader become familiar with the character and to make them go, wow, yeah, that's really cool. Look at that. But here's the, here's the other thing. It's like, this isn't Superman. You know, it's, it's not even close to Superman. It, it's not even the right world. So, why don't you do something a little bit different? You know, yeah, you change the S a little bit, but who cares about that? Give him a different identity so he doesn't always be the cookie cutter. You know, like for an example, you put some Photoshop in here and just change the color of his skin and that's Clark. You know, and I don't want that. And, and it's kind of like, this is a, while it is a classic pose, I'm just tired of them going to the classic pose. Come up with something a little bit different. Then you have Captain America here, and there's, I, I'm sorry about this, but there's going to be a spoilage. There's, you know, they're, make, they're fighting, and then this creature here sucks out his blood type thing, and Cap becomes old man Cap. He's not a super soldier anymore. How many times have we done this story before? You know, I'm like, really? Please. Didn't you kind of do this, you know, just recently? And it's like, why? Why do you go to the well so many times? You know, it's, you know, I, I understand, you know, you, you there's, maybe there's, there's a sense of we have to recycle the story because new readers are coming on every issue. But, you know, stuff like this just, I, I think, alienates some of your audience because, well, you're going to get some Captain America fans who are going, Oh my God, even though I have Captain America 1 to uh, 21, you know, volume 5, whatever volume it's at, you know, there's, they still love it. But there's other people who are just, who kind of move from comic, you know, issue to issue and go, I, I've read this before. Why should I, why should I care about what happens to Cap? You know, it's like, yeah, you're killing Wolverine and he's coming back a minimum of a year. You know, you're dismantling the Fantastic Four. Oh, guess what? Give it a year, and then they're going to come back. You know, maybe not a year. There'll be two years, or wait for an anniversary issue to come, and they'll be back. And now you're doing the same thing to Captain America. Well, guess what? Captain America was one of the most profitable Marvel movies. He's coming back. You know, it's like, oh, man, do something a little different. And here, Iron Fist. You know, you get a nice little origin, and at the very end, what happens? You know, like, for those who don't know the origin of Iron Fist, his, they're out uh, mountain climbing in the Himalaya-type place, someplace far in the mountains, ice and snow, you know, where there's no way people shouldn't go, and they're being stupid. And, you know, the, they're betrayed, the dad gets killed, and the mom gets killed by wolves. Well... You know he's he's being real emo about it. And I, hey, he's a little kid when it happened. I, I grant it. I'll give him a, I'll give him a point. I'll give him a pass. But then at the very very end of this goddamn book is oh I'd recognize those eyes anywhere. You're my son. Oh jeez, hey, you fucking ruined the goddamn story. Can't you goddamn it? Can't you just do a story without having to do bring somebody back to life? You know. Dead is dead, you know. I, I just, I'm just fed up with everybody coming back to life. I don't care if this is a robot. I don't care if it's anything. I'm just freaking tired of it. 
And it's just, you know, it's things like this that make me just want to cancel comics entirely and just put all my money into manga, because that, that shit don't fly in manga. Let me tell you that. You know, if they come back to life, there's a reason for them to come back to life. None of this nonsense. All that stuff is usually planned out well in the head in advance. None of this. Well, let's see what I can do about fine-tuning his origin, so this way we can make the comic relevant today. No, how about just freaking tell a good story? Don't don't deal with the past. He's a he's an emo kid, and let him be emo, and that's why he's Iron Fist, and don't bring his dad back to life. Next thing you know, his mom's in the horror house in the Himalayan mountains. You know what I mean? Come on. Anyways, that's my rant. Comments or questions, let me know. Let me know what is in your good, your bad, and your disappointing. I'll have more reviews later. Until next time.